Now, from the area's leader in live local news, this is WYLN News, the area's number one source of live local news and information in Luzerne, Schuylkill, Carbon, and Columbia counties. WYLN News starts now. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on WYLN News. I'm Paula Dagnan. Two women were flown to regional trauma centers following a one-car crash early this morning in Banks Township. These pictures are from the McAdoo Fire Company Facebook page. They, along with State Police and Hazleton and APTS EMS, were called to Main Street in Junedale for the crash just before 3 this morning. The driver, 23-year-old Brianna Weldick of Hazleton, was headed west on Main Street in Junedale when she veered 75 feet off the road and struck a tree. That's according to State Police at Hazleton investigating. Well, Aduka was taken to Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton. Her passenger, 24-year-old Caitlin Kolinsky of Hazel Township, was flown from the Trescow ball field via a medical helicopter to Lehigh Valley Cedar Crest. State police say neither woman was wearing a seatbelt. The investigation is continuing. A 30-year-old Hazleton man was arrested yesterday on drugs and firearms charges. Hazleton police say they used an informant to buy 200 bags of heroin from Hiliaro Tapia Balacasar during the transaction, according to police. He all took also took possession of what he believed were two stolen firearms. They turned out to be disabled firearms provided to the investigation by federal authorities. Luzerne County Drug Task Force, West Hazleton Police, and U.S. Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Bureau all assisted in that investigation. The Sean Christie saga continues. The United States Marshal Service has released new information about the man that is accused of threatening government officials, including President Trump. State police filed charges against the 27-year-old McAdoo man for breaking into Hazleton Oil and Environmental and stealing a black F-350 Ford truck that was found recently approximately 100 yards from the Canadian border in New York. Christie has multiple arrest warrants in Pennsylvania for burglary, probation violation, and failure to appear for an aggravated assault case. Marshals are offering a cash award of up to $5,000 for information leading to his arrest. All information will be considered confidential. Those who have information are asked to contact U.S. Marshals at 877-926-8332. A drunk homeless man was arrested Thursday after police say he dragged a woman into a wooded area, beat and molested her until police arrived. 38-year-old James Robert Adams of Wilkesbury was charged with strangulation, indecent assault, simple assault, possessing drug paraphernalia, harassment and public drunkenness. Here's what police say happened. Adams choked the victim with her own underwear before being caught in the woods near the flood wall along West River Street. Police say Adams came up and began dragging her down Pennsylvania Avenue, once hidden behind the trees, ripped the woman's clothes off and fondled her against her will. Police said Adams smelled of alcohol and said he had been drinking beer. He, ja he was jailed in the Luzerne County Prison, bail set at $30,000. The city of Wilkesbury taking the first step Thursday night in drawing a line in the sand when it comes to the use of fireworks within the city. At the request of Fire Chief Jay Delaney, City Council passed the first reading of an ordinance restricting the use of the fireworks. The city ordinance makes it clear the city does not grant permission for use of such fireworks on any city street, sidewalk, park or other city owned property. The state fireworks law passed last year allows consumer grade fireworks to include aerial fireworks and aerial spinners that contain 20 grams or less of composition. The law prohibits use of those fireworks within 150 feet of an occupied structure. It also prohibits use on public or private property without the express permission of the property owner.
Council voted unanimously to pass the fireworks ordinance. If it does pass next month, it will then become law within 10 days. Hazelton Zoning Board gave the go-ahead for a medical marijuana dispensary to operate. The board is allowing to Mukunji pharmacist Russell Kucha to convert the beer store building at West 21st Street into a medical marijuana dispensary. The project is now in the hands of state officials who could grant as many as 23 primary dispensary permits in the second round of Pennsylvania's medical marijuana program. The zoning board voting three to nothing on Thursday when granting variances to Kutcha for the property at 309 West 21st Street. The board also approved KCI Technologies to build a 180-foot cell phone tower for the Luzerne County 911 Center at 320 Arthur Gardner Parkway on land that's owned by the Hazelton City Authority. County officials received FAA approval for the tower, which will be the southernmost of 18 towers that Luzerne County 911 plans to build throughout its service area. Residents in Klein Township who haven't paid their garbage fee now face a bigger bill. The township secretary told supervisors that 45 residents have not paid their $170 garbage bill that was due to be paid by June 30th. Now those residents will have to pay $245 since they're considered past due. Officials say out of that 45, 10 are chronic non-payers. Township law provides a number of enforcement options. One of them is pursuit on a criminal basis. If people who have not paid continue to put garbage out, the action is considered theft of services. If the delinquency continues after 90 days, the township can file with the local magistrate to get all delinquent costs and fees to be added on top of the $75 penalty. WYLN now has a correction to a story that we aired yesterday here on WYLN News. Yesterday, we incorrectly reported that the new Starbucks that's coming to Sugarloaf Township was going into the strip mall next to Aldi's. It is actually going to be built next to Damon's on Route 93. WYLN apologizes for any confusion in that story. Coming up on WILN News, lots of activity at the Evergreen Raceway. Our Julie Stefanovich has the details, plus the grand opening, and it's a family affair at this year's Farmer's Market in Hazleton. But first, let's take a look at our seven-day forecast. The humidity is back. Muggy with clouds and an overnight low of 60. Partly cloudy, hit or miss thunderstorms for the next two days. 87 with the highs. Don't go away. We'll be right back. All Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones. At Grand Central, our family has been supplying your family with quality brand name furniture, mattresses, and appliances for over three generations. Whether you choose from our excellent selection of Lazy Boy, Catnapper, or England furniture, or from our fantastic selection of Sealy and Stearns and Foster mattresses, we guarantee total comfort in every room of your home. With expert advice, everyday low prices, plus interest-free financing for up to 60 months. From our family to your family. Grand Central and Hazleton, everything to make your house a home. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50% on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialist, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Tonight begins a weekend of racing events down in the valley. WILN's Julie Stefanovich has the details. 
racing fans need and travel far to experience stock car racing because it's right in their own backyards. Throughout the years, Evergreen Raceway has become a mecca for race enthusiasts located in Drums. It hosts racing every weekend from April until November. This evening before the race, up-and-coming musician Colby Oakley will be performing before the cars hit the track. It's our tour modified. We have coming down with our street stocks of four cylinders. Uh, last week I had uh, a band contact me, uh, Kobe Oakley, uh, an upcoming country singer. So we're going to put him into the event today and, and see how that works out. Spectators and drivers converge on Evergreen from near and far. Some are local, some come from New York, New Jersey, uh, a lot more from New Jersey than local actually. So we're, the local people are building, they are coming down and, and we're getting their interest. 2016 is when I took over the track. This is our third year and it's, it's growing. Uh, first two years, the first year was pretty, pretty bad. And then uh, it's, it's been growing. It's going really well now. Events are planned throughout the season, including a soon to be visit from Old St. Nick. Next weekend, we have a Sunday event, uh, mainly they're on, on Friday nights. Uh, the weekend after that, we have uh, Christmas in July. So we'll have Mr. and Mrs. Claus here. So uh, presents for the kids to give away and and that's, that would, we did that last year, and it worked out really well. The kids really liked it. There's still time to catch the festivities at Evergreen. Racing begins tonight around 8.15 p.m. To check out a complete schedule of upcoming events, you can log on to evergreenracewaypark.com. In drums for WYLN News, I'm Julie Stefanovich. And after a visit to the racetrack, of course, you're going to get hungry. Fresh fruit and vegetables along with homemade goods were found today in downtown Hazleton. The opening season of the farmer's market. She does get around. Julie Stefanovich was there and she did a little bit of sampling. Now is the perfect time of year to purchase freshly grown fruits and vegetables and downtown Hazleton is the place to be. The farmer's market officially opened for the season this morning at Center City Park. Vendors line Broad Street selling handmade and homemade goods along with organic produce grown right down the road in Butler Township. It's a really beautiful community garden and we do all organic foods, no pesticides or anything like that. And it's a, a really nice um, community there. So, but I think it's really important to, to be buying and, and selling organic uh, vegetables. So I'm, I'm a huge supporter of it. Yeah. For the crew at Burgers Farm, it's a family affair. Since 1889. My great grandfather, my grandfather, my mother and father, and myself. And now my son and his wife. Leonard has been farming for over 40 years and likes the chance to get reacquainted with customers who he has done business with throughout the years. I, I always think the people that used to come out to our farm when I was younger, they all ended up in uh, high rises. And now they come out and are happy to be able to still come out and get produce. So I felt that they, they supported me most of my life, so I can't hardly turn my back on them now. It's nice to see them come out. We pick up a lot of new customers out here too. Keystone Job Corps and Drums also attends the event as an outreach to the community. We spoke today with three students who are currently enrolled at the campus. At Job Corps, we help with a lot of things like your license, your high school diploma, GED, and certifications and like medical assistance and forklifting. The students are also on site recruiting. Keystone gives free education. They also give you um, a high school diploma and a driver's license. And also it's, a trade. Free trade. It's available for everybody in Hazleton because it's really close. One of the main reasons why we came out here was to make a name for Job Corps in general. Uh, we're trying to build, rebuild with the community, trying to get our hands wherever we can. Uh, we have plenty of students that can go out there and join the community and do whatever they can with the community. Um, it's just getting out there. You know? The downtown Hazleton Farmers Market will be open every Friday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. until early September. In Hazleton, for WYLN News, I'm Julie Stefanovich. And coming up on Zion Grove's News Choice, need a good laugh? We'll have the details in Community and You, plus the weekend review. But first, Let's take a look at today's winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played. Stay with us.
Hi. I had a very minor uh, fender bender tonight in an unreasonably narrow fast food drive through lane. Don't worry, I have everything handled. I already spoke to our Allstate agent, and I know that we have accident forgiveness, which is so smart on your guys' part. Like, the fact that they'll Four just... weeks without the car. Okay, yep, good night. With accident forgiveness, your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Switching to Allstate is worth it. Visit your local Allstate agent, the McNeilis Agency in Hazleton at 1092 North Church Street, or in hometown in the hometown village square. Want to watch WYLN over the air with an antenna? These maps make it easy for you to check out our over the air UHF coverage area using the Longley Rice propagation mode. All of our broadcast and cable maps can be found on our Facebook page and on WYLNTV.com. Serve the Lord singing for joy, the CD by the Sisters of Holy Annunciation Monastery can be yours for just $13, which includes shipping and tax. Mail a check to Holy Annunciation Monastery, 430 West County Road in Sugarloaf, Pennsylvania, or call 570-788-1205. This 10-song CD can be yours for just $13. Attention, WYLN viewers, WYLN TV can now be seen on the Hazleton Service Electric Cable Vision HD tier, channel 507, and over the air at 35.1. WYLN, we're your local network. Welcome to Community and You, and we are going to the theater. It has something to do with Macbeth, but the Farndale Avenue Housing Estate Town Women's Guild Dramatic Society's production of Macbeth. Karen Padden, come on. Really? <laughs> Only you would come along with a title that's longer than the whole show. <laughs> it's a delightful title. And you are Minnie? I am Minnie. To give us a little bit of this, and then we're going to meet this uh, handsome young man who's standing next to you because he has some of the key parts of the show. He's a very important part, but I'll let him talk about that. Yes. Um, imagine a bunch of really earnest women who want to do a good job at Macbeth, and then everything goes tragically wrong, but in the absolute best way. Oh. Um, so Minnie and her girlfriends get to oh. do Macbeth, and everybody has a different part, and we all made our own costumes, and we baked pie and jam for the production, and we're so excited that we get this, we're going to get to do the ch this, and then, then uh, one of the girls um, has a baby a couple weeks before and breaks her arm, and then another girl has really thick glasses that sometimes go awry, and then um, sometimes lines don't get remembered, and we're trying really hard to do a good job, but we're also having a really good time doing it. So it's a show within a show. Yes. And you're, where, where does it take place? Um, well, New England, middle in England. Oh, in, in England. Yeah, yeah in oh, England. Oh, well, that explains the whole thing then. <laughs> in England, in a, a housing complex, and these women, this is their dramatic society, uh, and they get together, and they've been working on this for nine months. The same time as the woman having the baby. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Each woman represents a different kind of person that you will meet in community theater. There's the diva who is convinced that nothing will happen without her. Oh no. There's the, <laughs> There's the person who everything kind of happens to, but she keeps trooping along. There's the one who's a sweetheart, but maybe not the sharpest tool in the drawer. And each trope goes on and on. So everybody can sort of, sort of like, Oh, I know who that person is, or I know who that person is, and have ah. a really good laugh. So, I, now, Minnie is not Macbeth. No. So, does Minnie play Macbeth? No, Minnie plays Banquo. Oh. So, Minnie gets to die <gasps> multiple times. Oh. And use roller skates and tap dance. So, like, I get to do a little bit of everything plus the kitchen sink. It's a great, great time. We laugh a lot in roller rehearsals. Skates. Yeah, I'll leave that as a teaser. Yeah, well, that's a good teaser. All <laughs> right. Poof, we're going to let you relax for a minute. Ian Padden, how are you? I am good right now. How good. are you? I am wonderful. Now, good. I understand that you have one of the key elements of the entire production. What is that? I'm the lights director. There you go. So I, um, I light them up. I do blackouts. 
And I'm also one of the main things that go wrong <laughs> in a huge scene. <laughs> so, so you actually have a crew member who is going to do things that are that's going to horror of all horrors, mess up the actors. Yeah, I am. Oh my, you must enjoy that. Um, I haven't gotten to practice it yet, but <gasps> I bet I'm. I, it's it's going to be great. Do you think I'm it's going to feel a little bit different when you actually know you're messing up your mom? Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> you better be nice to him before these performances. And I should point that out. <laughs> the acting family of the Paddens. Mm -hmm. And it's not just <laughs> it's, not, it's not just you two. No, you, we also have um, his older brother, Logan, is 16. And he performs He's with, in the drama club he, at his the, school. With the drama club at JAR. Last year, he did Ghost the Musical and In the Heights. With nice. The, uh, the, it's the Coughlin G A R yeah, dramatic, drama club. Drama club, and then my and husband then Rob Padden. He is the director of a haunted house called Gravestone Manor. And we've heard October. of that. Yes. And we all volunteer with Gravestone Manor in the fall, and we raise money yeah. for United Way. That is awesome. So I'll tell you what. It's it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Theater Definitely. from a different perspective. Yeah. That we probably will never see again. And it's hard because you have to know the way it's supposed to be properly and then get it all wrong <laughs> properly <laughs> like because there's certain things that have to happen at certain times. So here I am speaking the actual lines from Big Bats and, and then I have to be like, oh, it's your line. <laughs> and then yeah. other things go terribly wrong. So you have to know what's right and what's wrong and what order they go in. In so it's instead of just being in a show and then saying, oh, I messed that up, but now I have to go on, you're actually getting applause from your director. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, I messed that up. He's like, yes, you did. <laughs> well, yes. the, the Farndale Avenue Housing Estate Town Women's, Towns Women's Guild Dramatic Society's production of Macbeth, woo, <laughs> is, is, is all the information's on your screen. It's on our Facebook page. It's on their Facebook page. Karen and Ian, a pleasure. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. a lot of fun and you work hard on those blackouts. I will. All right, and we'll catch you again soon on Community and You. Chur's Auto Sales has been serving the area with quality vehicles since 1954. Chur's Auto Sales is known as your friendly dealer and now in their fourth generation and voted the best used car dealer by the readers of Standard Speaker Choice Awards. John Chur would like to thank everyone that voted for his business. When you need a quality pre-owned vehicle, choose from a large selection at Chura's 570-454-7229. Pocono Raceway is summertime, where the whole crew's invited, where fans become friends, where good times roll, and the racing is always a little tricky. Bring your friends, bring your family, just bring it, Pocono style. Monday. Shots fired in Plymouth late Sunday night led one person to undergo treatment and police are searching for suspects. It happened on Eno Street around 11 p.m. A man was reportedly taken for treatment for non-life-threatening injuries. Police are looking for two men and a black SUV. Anyone with information is asked to contact Plymouth Police about this incident. Tuesday. Fire gutted a home in Columbia County Monday night. Firefighters from Burke were called to the home on Fair Street just after 1 Tuesday morning. The fire chief said a family of five lived in the home and all got out safely with their pets. The heat from the fire even melted the siding on a neighboring home. The American Red Cross was called in to help the family with a place to stay. Investigators say two boys playing with a lighter and burning paper before they went to bed led to that fire. Wednesday, a Wilkes-Barre area school board member says he will not resign over a comment that he posted on social media. 
When the article was shared on the Wilkes-Barre Area Save Our Schools page, board member Ned Evans remarked quickly made many call for his resignation and removal. It involved a case out of the area involving a teacher and a 13-year-old student having a sexual relationship. He apologized for the comments, and despite others saying that he should resign, including the superintendent and many other school board members, he says he's staying. Thursday. A fire ripped through two homes Thursday afternoon in Port Carbon, that's just outside of Pottsville. Fire crews were originally called there for a brush fire that was imposing on a house that was quickly upgraded to a working structure fire. Crews from throughout Schuylkill County were called in to help bring the fire under control on Market Street. The fire jumped to a neighboring home, catching that one on fire as well. At one point, the fire chief pulled all firefighters out of the home and attacked the fire from the outside. A fire marshal was called in to investigate the fire. One firefighter was treated for an ankle injury. Friday. Two women were flown to regional trauma centers following a one-car crash early Friday morning in Banks Township. These pictures are from the McAdoo Fire Company Facebook page. They, along with state police at Hazleton and APTS ambulance, were called to Main Street in Junedale for the crash just before 3 o'clock this morning. The driver, 23-year-old Brianna Woodlick of Hazleton, was headed west on Main Street in Junedale when she veered 75 feet off the road, striking a tree. That's according to state police. The vehicle then continued another 45 feet before striking another tree. She was taken to Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton, while her passenger, 24-year-old Caitlin Konowski of Hazel Township, was flown from the Tresco ball field via a medical helicopter to Lehigh Valley Hospital, Cedarcrest. State police say neither of the women were wearing a seatbelt. That's your weekend review brought to you by Van Hoekland's Greenhouses in Mackinac. Stay with us. A look at today's weather is next here on WILN News. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicap accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. There are packages available to fit anyone's budget, restaurant and catering on site. Our facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor and private parties. Call 570-384-2314. WYLN CA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN 1057 East 10th Street in Hazleton, Pennsylvania during normal business hours. To view the report online, visit FCC.org. 